Welcome back. Um, we're looking at the second half of chapter 20, which looks specifically at the IS curve, which is one of the building blocks for the sort of foundational stuff that we understand basic mechanics of the macroeconomy. So what we're looking at here in this chapter is specifically shifts of the IS curve and the factors that are going to affect that. Um, there are three basic factors that are going to shift the IS curve, um, and they're all uh, fairly important, and we can have some um, nice, interesting results that come out of that. The first is fiscal policy. So obviously, fiscal policy is a big deal, and it has been um, much more recently as a result of the financial crisis. But we can model uh, changes in fiscal policy through this IS framework. So changes in government spending, as we talked about before, are autonomous and they're just fixed. Um, but we can, as those things change, we can model that through our IS uh, framework. We can also look at change in in um, taxes. And as I mentioned in a previous video, we assume taxes here are flat taxes. They're independent of income. You could still model it as a function uh, of, say, a fraction of total income, and it would slightly complicate the mathematics, but not change the fundamental results. The second piece of how the IS curve changes are uh, changes in what we refer to as autonomous spending. So these are change in autonomous consumption, which, as you remember, are non-income non sources of consumption. So spending on consumption out of income, things like wealth or saving. The second piece is changes in autonomous investment. We talked about animal spirits. We talked about uh, things like tax codes and, and incentives for firms to invest, uh, which are independent of the cost of investing, which is the interest rate. And then the other piece is changes in autonomous net exports. Um, again, this could be for a variety of reasons. If countries put up trade barriers, which don't necessarily uh, translate with exchange rate uh, behavior, then those types of things can affect the trade flows. And then the last piece that we'll look at is changes in financial frictions, which, as we talked about in a previous video, that has to do with changes in credit spreads from benchmark rates. So if it really sort of reflects the availability of credit to in, uh, uh, firms who would like to borrow. And so that's going to impact the sort of the actual cost of borrowing that, that firms face. Okay, so we'll look very briefly at fiscal policy. Um, and so the intuition here is simply that if we look at, say, taxes, then taxes are going to affect disposable income. Disposable income affects consumption. And consumption, of course, is a, a component of that planned spending that we talked about before. So when planned spending change, that's going to impact uh, firms desire to produce, and that effect, that's going to, of course, affect income. Um, and so, so we have this sort of um, uh, uh, trail of, of reasoning between changes in taxes and how that affects um, output. Um, if we look at government spending, again, it's sort of a similar story, but much more direct. Change in government spending affects planned spending, uh, planned expenditures, and that, of course, affects production and hence the level of income in equilibrium. So if we look at our uh, slightly, again, complicated um, goods market equilibrium through this IS curve here, again, keep in mind this expression here is our IS curve, okay? And so you can see those two factors here, those fiscal policy factors are right there, uh, the, government, the government spending and the tax effect. And you'll notice that there's, the government spending is additive, as government spending rises, then planned spending overall increases. That triggers firms to produce more goods. Income rises, and you get the, the increase in income from here. And you also notice that there's a minus sign there uh, on the tax impact. So again, intuitively, if taxes are cut, if there's a reduction in taxes, disposable income rises, consumption goes up. That raises planned spending, and that should trigger a higher level of income, holding interest rates constant. And so we can see this in the graph here. Um, if we looked at, say, an increase in government spending or a cut in taxes or both simultaneously, then those are going to have the, the, the same impact. They're going to be reinforcing to one another. And so if we look at any arbitrary interest rate here, holding interest rates constant, then as we increase government spending, as we cut taxes, or as we do both, then that's going to increase the level of planned spending and hence production and income at any given interest rate. And so that results in this shift to the right of our IS curve. At any given interest rate, total income uh, and aggregate output demand goes up at that interest rate. And again, we're holding inflation here uh, constantly.
constant behind the scenes. Now we can look at some examples of autonomous spending changes. Um, as a, again, as we've talked about before, these changes in autonomous spending, those are going to impact uh, planned spending in the various sectors, uh, regardless of where they're coming from. And again, that's going to impact firms' production decisions um, in a goods market equilibrium, hence the total level of income and output. And so we can see that in several um, of the, the pieces here, again, with our IS curve. Um, there's our autonomous consumption, autonomous investment, and autonomous net export. So if any one of those goes up, again, holding interest rates constant, we would expect planned spending and actual output and production to rise as a result. And so uh, we can look at an example, the opposite of what I just talked about here. In this case, if either any of these planned investments, autonomous consumption, or planned net exports, uh, autonomous net exports rather, decline for whatever reason, then at any given interest rate, if we hold that constant at some arbitrary interest rate, then that's going to re uh, that's going to result in a decline in planned spending overall, and so that's going to uh, shift the IS curve to the left. Now you'll notice in these previous uh, our previous slide here with this IS equation, it's a linear equation, and what's happening here is these changes in autonomous spending are impacting our, our y-axis, or sorry, our, our uh, vertical axis, if you will. Okay, so that's how you can think about those changes as impacting um, the vertical axis. But intuitively, it's sometimes more easy to think about it in terms of these horizontal shifts. And then the last piece is financial frictions. So again, the idea here is that financial frictions can impact the, the real interest rate, the real cost of borrowing that firms face, and that's independence of, independent of sort of the benchmark interest rates that could prevail. And this could have to do with simple supply and demand conditions um, in, in terms of the availability of credit. So if there's a financial panic, if um, there's, there's reasons that banks are skeptical about lending money out for any reason, then this, uh, this financial frictions thing can kick in and that can artificially increase the cost of borrowing relative to this, uh, the so-called interest rate on safe debt or the risk-free rate or something like that. Again, you can think of the risk-free rate as maybe the interest rate that monetary policy sets, or alternatively, you can think of it as the interest rate on treasuries or something like that. And so during financial panics, that F bar is gonna go up and it's gonna increase the cost of borrowing to firms that, that the firms face. And so, again, the, the intuition here is that if we're holding the real interest rate constant, this sort of benchmark or safe or, or risk-free interest rate constant, as financial frictions change, that's going to change the real cost of borrowing that firms face. And so, as that happens, that's going to change planned investments and therefore planned expenditure um, in, in the usual sort of uh, chain of logic that we talked about. And so, again, with this IS curve here, we have our expression for the IS curve, and you can see those financial frictions come into play right there. And you can notice that we have that minus sign there. So as financial frictions rise, banks are more wary about lending money out. That's going to raise the cost of, of accessing credit for firms above this sort of benchmark real interest rate. Um, or the safe interest rate that you would think about. And so we have that minus sign there because as financial frictions rise, the real cost of borrowing as reflected by firms goes up, plan investment falls, and so you would expect uh, total income to fall as a result. And so here's, again, an example of what I just talked about. Um, if financial frictions rise, then the real interest rate that banks, uh, that sorry, that firms face to the real cost of borrowing, RC, goes up at any given risk-free or safe debt rate, R. And so holding, again, that real interest rate, R constant, that RC is going to go up because of the increase in financial frictions. That means that planned investment is going to go down, and that's going to shift this IS curve to the left. So in summary, you can see that there's uh, several things that uh, impact this IS curve. 
And these are all summarized here. We have um, these uh, autonomous uh, spending components here and here. We have our fiscal policy right there. And then we have our financial frictions here. And of course, these are shown for just one chain, a change in, in the upward direction. If those things decrease, then you're going to have opposite effects through these shifts on the IS curve. Thank you.